So, you probably saw the latest hit piece on the alt-right from Right Wing Watch. It was the same old stuff we've seen before, profiling some of the leading voices of our movement, calling them extremists, and making compilations of quotations that frankly sounded entirely reasonable. The piece also featured some other people who, whilst not in our movement, sometimes enter our orbit for various reasons, and who are laughingly called in the piece, enablers of hate. I'm afraid I couldn't help but belly laugh when I saw Sargon's face staring back at me under that banner. It's just another day in clown world. So this is just the latest piece of facile posturing, even against those who are simply willing to have a conversation with us and test the merits of our beliefs. I've said before that the left, at least those who are leading it and setting the agenda, know the threat we represent. The truth is pure poison to them, and they know we have it. And they know that once people are exposed to it, they will come our way. They are right to be scared and desperate. Take, for example, Sargon's latest interview with Jared Taylor. Anyone even slightly reasonable watching it would have absorbed solid information and argumentation about race realism. Sargon deserves credit for giving Jared his time, but the left is correct. Sargon got trounced, and indeed opened the door to the alt-right for hundreds of thousands of new people. He enabled hate, or rather he enabled the free expression of the truth of the natural world that we espouse. You don't win debates against Jared Taylor. You simply try to limit the damage. So it's small wonder then that the left or anyone else so rarely opens the door to us. The truth that underpins our movement is something they need to keep contained at all costs. This is why they shout Nazi at everyone who is even remotely conservative now. There is a reason so much time, effort and money has been invested in making the word Nazi so powerful. And that is because it was always intended to serve as the justification for every leftist degradation of the West since World War II. The thing is, they've broken one of their cardinal rules as laid out in Saul Alinsky's book, Rules for Radicals. Rule number seven, a tactic that drags on too long becomes a drag. Don't become old news. Screaming racist Nazi ad nauseum just doesn't have the power it once did, at least outside the media, hence our movement. They have become old news. The very troubling consequences of multiculturalism have now become so undeniable that more and more people are seeing our positions as perfectly rational. We are now the radical alternative for the West. Not the tired old left with its burgeoning degeneracy, its Zionist funding and lies. What does it have to offer the West for its future? Well, this. 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 And this. This is what it has to offer. How's that future going to work out for your children? So the reason why, ultimately, the left will lose and we will win is because it can't have this conversation with us. To do so would be to simply sink its own ship. It's still clinging to the hope that people will agree with it out of habit or fear, but that's no longer enough. This hit piece by Right Wing Watch contains not even the briefest attempt to counter the logic of our narrative. Therefore, it's not actually a hit piece against us at all, but rather a demonstration of the left's inability to respond intelligently to the resurgent right. The left is fundamentally dishonest and confused. Its hypocrisy and lack of self-awareness know no bounds. Have a look at this clip. But you understand that, that, that 
race uh, and colour is much more than skin deep. Uh, it's heritage yeah, and absolutely. pedigree and tradition and history and, 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 and struggle. It's all of those things that you can't hope to get anywhere near with three tanning injections. So when we whites say our race matters then, they call us Nazis. When non-whites say their race matters, they are called heroes. Everyone's race matters except ours. The left cannot win on consistency, coherence or facts. And as they say, the truth will out. It was the work of the neo-Marxist Frankfurt School, which was composed overwhelmingly of Jewish intellectuals, that laid the foundation for this apparent leftist insanity around 60 to 70 years ago. It was Herbert Marcuse of the Frankfurt School that came up with the doctrine of repressive tolerance. In his essay of the same name, he wrote, and I quote, Liberating tolerance, then, would mean intolerance against movements from the right and toleration of movements from the left. In past and different circumstances, the speeches of the fascist and Nazi leaders were the immediate prologue to the massacre. The distance between the propaganda and the action, between the organisation and its release on the people, had become too short. But the spreading of the word could have been stopped before it was too late. If democratic tolerance had been withdrawn when the future leaders started their campaign, mankind would have had the chance of avoiding Auschwitz and a world war." Unquote. Repressive tolerance, then, is the doctrine of tearing down the institutions that built and sustained the West in order to advance some illusory vision of social justice. It is simply a wrecking ball, fueling racial and social conflict, with no vision of how to build anything credible in its place. It is ultimately a nihilistic philosophy based on bitterness and despair. I don't know whether Marcuse really believed his own theory. I doubt it. My own feeling is that he was a master manipulator who hated the West and understood the destructive potential of youth. Either way, Today's leftist hysterics and treasonous anti-nationalism are directly traceable back to Marcuse's work. The left believes, or at least pretends to believe, that society is only ever a hair's breadth away from the outbreak of fascism, and this is what justifies their repressive tactics. The irony of that is, by the way it is behaving, it seems to be doing everything it can to bring that about. The left believes that it alone holds the key to the intellectual liberation of humanity, and that Western conservatism is the darkness that keeps people enslaved, particularly the so-called marginalised groups. The only way to liberate the human mind from the conditioning of Western civilization, then, is to overtly favour these groups and rebel against anything and everything emanating from the Western tradition. The Frankfurt School's radical egalitarianism can only be achieved by making the oppressor the oppressed and vice versa. This is why the left tells us that blacks can never be racist, why third world migrants should be welcome regardless of our ability to cope with them, why affirmative action is the moral thing to do, why Islam is a religion of peace regardless of how many of our people Muslims rape and murder why deliberately infecting someone with HIV should no longer be a felony, why national borders are inherently racist, why being a stay-at-home mum is to be a failure as a woman, why it's okay for children to decide whether they are male or female, and why white men are the last social group that can justifiably and openly be targeted. Could it be any clearer that this is precisely the strategy the left is currently following? So don't look for reason on the left, because you won't find it. But I believe that some are not beyond help, so we should not stop reaching out to people like Sargon and his viewership, people on the moderate left and civic nationalists, and we must continue to press home our natural advantage in debate whenever we can. If any leftists are watching this, I ask you to look at the contradictions and lunacy of your beliefs, 
and at the fevered irrationality of the way you and your colleagues behave. The alt-right stands for the preservation of Western civilization, the envy of the world, and the irreplaceable white race that built it. Don't destroy it over some misguided notion of compassion or justice. The damage you are doing is incalculable. If having an honest conversation with us means exposing truths that make you uncomfortable, then you should examine the truth of your own beliefs about the world and how it really is. Be on the right side of history. Until next time, be well.